What's up, TRC fans? Don't miss our annual Street Kings event at Bradenton Motorsports Park on December 10th. Join the TRC team for an action-packed day of drag racing, roll racing, and a car show. We'll see you out there. Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today I'm gonna to be taking apart the TRC RSX's 2.0 liter K20. This engine has been through a fair share of life. It has over 200,000 miles on it. And at some point during the car's life, it was supercharged and then it was later turbocharged. It's gone as fast as 10.1 at 137 in the quarter mile. and that is uh, after the all-wheel drive conversion was done. The engine was running when it came out of the car, but it was overheating at the track as he went through the traps, so it's safe to say that it's got an alien head gasket, but we're gonna take it apart and share what we see. So most of you know what a K-Series is by now, and for those that don't, it's Honda's incredible replacement for the Honda B-Series, which was a phenomenal engine and still is a really neat engine to use. The K-Series has a bed plate design, so the middle of the main caps is split where that's the bottom half of the block, which has a superior integrity over a staining main cap or a splayed main cap setup. It has variable inlet cam timing. It has incredible airflow. One of the neatest things about the K-Series, in my opinion, is the amount of airflow that the cylinder head has. And um, this engine from the factory is a square engine with an 86 millimeter bore and an 86 millimeter stroke. So his new engine will be a 92 millimeter stroke in a K24 block. So it's kind of a K24 D-stroker, but it will make um, really good power. It'll have six millimeters more stroke than this engine did. It'll have a really nice rod stroke ratio and go to 10,000 with a good amount of authority, which will be really neat with the sequential gearbox. So pretty cool stuff. Honda, uh, Honda really does a phenomenal job with, um, with their engines. So we have the engine all apart on the bench and the good news is, is nothing's really broken. And you could really attribute that to only racing the engine on good fuel. So this has a race grade ethanol in it. Um, they've been running on one R ethanol, which is a really good fuel. So you have that and you have a tuner that's really experienced with this engine. So you have those two things working in your favor. What was not working in the engine's favor was the deck is now warped. So the deck, has four thousands worth of warp to it. And when you have a flange seal where you have a head and a block and you're bolting those together and you're using a multi-layer steel gasket, 
the gasket doesn't have a lot of ability to cover for warped parts. So by the time you get to three or four thousandths worth of warped parts, whether it be the head or the block, the gasket can't seal. I can't get my five thousandths feeler gauge in there, but the four thousandths feeler gauge floats around under the straight edge. So if the engine block sitting on the bench has four thousandths worth of warp, once the engine is hot, and the cylinder pressure is excited, the flange seal, you're gonna get a leak. So we had a leak there. So we came over to Mazworks and we've kind of like taken a Sharpie and scribbled all over the deck. And we're gonna make a skim pass on the block to see if we can show you guys a better indication of what that warpage looks like along the deck. So here we are at 2000s off the top of the block and we are just kind of touching the corners and starting to level out this side of the block. So while we were at Real Street, we noticed three to four thousands just checking with a feeler gauge and a feeler gauge is not going to be as exact as this machine. So we're going to go another 2000s and see what we have for a print then. So there you have it, uh, five and a half thousandths of an inch to get the deck back being completely flat. So if you are having a head gasket issue and you're gonna fix it on a weekend, find yourself a straight edge and make sure that the deck is flat so you're not wasting time. Uh, Multi-layer steel gaskets only have three to four thousandths worth of spring memory to cover for distortion or warpage on either the head or the block deck itself. But this block is now surfaced they won't leave here like this because it's going to follow through a lot of other procedures in order to go back into another car, but it's a good illustration of how odd a deck can start changing shape under high stress, high horsepower conditions. As far as the head gasket goes, the head gasket itself looks okay. Otherwise, not much to report. There's some wear in the piston pin bores, but it's just stock stuff, so you cannot be angry at it. You know, it did a very good job, and this car went 137 miles an hour in the quarter. Okay, so here we have it, best pass of the night. 10-1-1-2 at 137.7. Man, that is flying. And if you do the math on that with the vehicle weight, it's nearly 700 horsepower, which is pretty exciting. But you have an engine that was competently tuned by a man that has a tremendous amount of experience tuning Hondas, and it was done on a high quality race fuel. So there's two things that are gonna work drastically in its favor that I think that if you were working with an inexperienced tuner and or a poor quality fuel, he wouldn't have gotten this far. There's some wear in the bearings, which you could expect for an engine with 200,000 miles on it. Uh, there's some damage to the thrust bearing because as the clutch pushes against that thrust bearing, it displaces the oil and then it starts to damage the bearing. And that's typical of a heavy pressure plate aftermarket clutch and a 180 degree thrust. If you had an engine that had a 360 degree thrust where the entire surface is protected by a 360 degree bearing, then it's less likely to experience crank walk and damage to the thrust bearing. But this engine only has a 180 degree thrust and you can see that in the short period of time that it had a heavy aftermarket clutch, somewhere has occurred. We're gonna reuse a fair share of these parts as we move to his new engine build. Uh, a lot of the small parts, supporting parts will be reused. This block and crank will go on to be uh, life in another form after it's machine rebuilt and put back into another vehicle for operation. The stage that I need to accomplish today was to get the auxiliary parts ready to go on his new engine. I've done that and we can move forward from here. If you wanna see more videos like this, we have more teardown videos on the Real Street Performance Channel. Sorry there wasn't a lot of action in this one. You know, kudos to Honda for building a killer engine. Stay tuned to this channel because we'll be assembling his K24D Stroker, which I think is gonna be a really perfect combination for what Javier does. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.